implantable human chips. Supporters hail the technology as a medical marvel, but critics warn that the potential risks are real. Well, they talked about, for example, electrical hazards. This thing is by no means inert. The, w the way it works is it actually picks up and amplifies ambient electromagnetic energy from the reader devices. And if you have one of these things in your arm and you get within range of a, a powerful electromagnetic field, it can actually burn you. Oh, and by the way, it can kill you if you get out of line. <laughs> a closer look at the who and the why behind this idea. All right, this next story may sound like something out of, uh, well, a Hollywood thriller. A Saudi inventor has created a killer microchip. It's designed to track terrorists and criminals and, well, you can think of somebody. Not only does it include a GPS device, it also has a lethal dose of cyanide, which can be activated at any time. You get my point? The inventor's bid for a patent has been rejected in Germany. Joining us now this morning to talk about it, Jake Ward, deputy editor of Popular Science. Okay, this is pretty macabre, pretty uh, sinister and nefarious. How exactly would this work? Well, there's a, a category of technology uh, that involves GPS tracking systems being shrunk down to the size where you could actually implant it surgically. And we've seen a number of applications for this. Um, this is without question the most sinister version of it that I've certainly heard of. Um, you know, and, and the notion of tracking criminals is not new, but the notion of killing them remotely, I think, is, is a whole new thing. Yeah, and Germany says, look, we're, we're not going to approve this That's because right. for that very purpose. And apparently, in some of the paperwork and applying for the patent, you know, you could track fugitives from justice, terrorists, illegal immigrants, criminals, political opponents, defectors, and Saudi Arabians who don't re return home from pilgrimage. It's a, it's a little bit wild. I agree. I mean, the, the thing about, uh, uh, you know, this kind of patent is Germany has very tight laws about making sure that you, you're not registering something that really is just a, 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 a bad idea, a scary idea. And in this case, this guy obviously has some very strong feelings about what it would be used for, but it just seems a little outlandish. Yeah, well, terrorist groups might be interested. I'm sure they'd be happy to grant their own form of a patent sure. for that. Sure. Um, the bigger world, though, of GPS, talk to us about how it's being used to, for example, uh, track sex offenders? Sure. Uh, the Washington state legislature right now is considering uh, uh, the possibility of registering perhaps 100 sex offenders um, with a GPS chip that's implanted in their shoulder um, because they found that a few of them um, have uh, been wearing them on their uh, wrists and then have cut them off, which just defeats the purpose. And so, uh, but the, the, the larger world of this technology is actually pretty happy stuff. I mean, um, there is new technology for tracking Alzheimer's patients, you know, who right, may, who may wander away. Right. Right. Sure. Um, tracking uh, uh, the the vital signs of professional athletes from the sideline. Um, you know, there's been a couple really? of cases in which you know football players have, have uh, collapsed of heat exhaustion, and seeing the early warning signs of that. Um, there's technology that that sort of allows you to do that remotely. Um, you know, even something as benign as keeping track of your dog. You know, a radio frequency tag yeah. implanted in your pet. The the vet you know finds a stray, scans it, and finds its rightful owner in an instant. Yeah. Do you see an explosion of the use of GPS devices, and, and obviously a lot of people are concerned about an intrusion of privacy. Absolutely, sure. I mean, I think that, that there is a trade-off there, and obviously this, this uh, you know, the, the inventor who filed for this patent has gone across the line in terms of privacy, yeah. um, but uh, the, you know, the use of GPS in the future will allow you to, you know, you'll never lose your wallet again, you'll never lose your keys again, right. it's that kind of stuff where you're going to, you know, you'll be able to beat any object you own. You know, and, and and find it in the house, and so um, you know, there's the there's the vicious expression, and then there's the really really helpful expression. I think we'll see in the future. You know, I lose socks in the dryer. I don't know how that happens. Maybe that would help me uh, in that regard. Yes. <laughs> Jake Ward, deputy editor of Popular Science. Uh, interesting stuff. Thanks very much. I've got my little buddies microchipped. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. I do, just in case they get away, and then you you bring them and let you take them to like the checkout counter at the grocery store, and you scan them, and then they say, hey, I belong to Megan Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool, yeah. Our chip has been approved by the FDA as a Class II medical device in order to identify high-risk patients in an emergency situation. It's elective, it's voluntary, 
and it is certainly critical to the evolution of information technology in health care. Oh, go ahead. You have one in your arm right now. That's correct. Where is it? It's in the upper right arm. It's a simple injection process, just like getting a shot of penicillin. Is it painful? Not at all. They numb the area slightly. You don't feel it. They put a Band-Aid on it. Within two days, you don't even know it's there. And can we, I don't know, did you get a good shot of this, Peter, this chip? I don't know how tight you can get on it, but these are small, and you've got a scanner with you right now. That's correct. This is the passive scanner. The critics would say, and I listened to it, and I'm trying to figure it out, but they use the they word a lot. Is there a vast RFID conspiracy out there that is plotting? They would say this is a slippery slope. This is the first thing. This is where you lull us into a false sense of security. We all get these things. And then the next thing, you know, I don't know. Making the soil and green. Yeah, the Trilateral Commission or the whole world gets taken over, like in Terminator 3 or something. Is anything, I mean, do we need to worry? There's no conspiracy, Joe. You sure? I'm sure. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at your eyebrow. It twitches when you say that a little bit. And I'm looking back at you. Let me say this. Let me say this. As far as the RFID industry is concerned. More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. By that time, there may be all kinds of new ways to safeguard and identify all those things that make each of us unique, our faces, even our fingerprints, even our eyes. Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but... Thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. The technology is based on answering one simple question. Am I who I say I am? Already, fingerprints and iris scans verify passenger identities at airports. Within 10 years, that technology may be even more widespread. And look for more complex facial recognition programs that scan a crowd of thousands looking for a single terrorist. Today's facial recognition software starts with the eyes, then it maps out the contours of the face and compares that against a database of millions, a database that's growing by the day. What's next? At the University of Bath in England, researchers predict big changes for consumers. I think it is possible to free us completely of our wallets and keys using biometric technology, if that's what people want in 10 years' time. In fact, it's already here. The latest home security locks use fingerprints to control deadbolts. And at the Jewel Osco grocery store in Chicago, some customers pay using their fingerprints. No paper or plastic. You don't really need anything other than your hand, and you already got that with you. So will future department stores scan our irises, like in the movie Minority Report, then offer products catered to who we are? Hello, Mr. Yakamoto. Welcome back to The Gap. Experts say that technology is here now. The challenge is to safeguard our privacy in a brave new world. Tom Costello, NBC News, Alexandria, Virginia. How revealing the Bible is. It's right up to date with all these global headlines. Two countries are pushing for a global currency, Russia and China. That's what they really, really want. And then also something really caught my attention I'm going to put with that, and that's the biometric ID cards to 1.2 billion citizens in India. That's something else. This biometric ID, Jack, uh, how about it? Are both of those things in the Bible too? Rexella, I'm literally shocked. Let's take this thing about money. Not only does it Russia and China want this, but a real hair raiser. Pope Benedict XVI just announced this week that he wants to see a new financial condition in the world, and he also says, I want to see a one-world government led by a one-world leader. And that, my friends, is undoubtedly the leader of the new world order. Now, it's going to deteriorate to the place where they're casting their silver and gold in the streets in Ezekiel 719 because everything has become worthless. And so now, because of cash, they're going to a new system, a numerical system, with chips embedded in the hands and forehead. And the number there is 666 in Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18. And can you believe, ladies and gentlemen, that the Bilderbergs who created the European Union and who are now promoting Obama for the New World Order are saying we will chip everyone by 2017, and that's 
He had Revelation 13, verses 16 and 18. He caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or forward that no man, no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that understand me count the number of the Antichrist, the beast. For it's the number of a man and his number 600, three score and six, 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 six. You also find it in Revelation 14, verses 9, 11, 15, 2, 16, 2, 19, 20, and 20. Verse 4. Oh, Jack, that is exciting. Isn't it wonderful the Bible addresses everything? Hi, it's Joey B here. I just wanted to include a couple of videos here. Uh, I'm sure a lot of my subscribers have already seen this, but uh, it's my vi video I've done titled Globalist Depopulation Agenda and Sinister DNA Plan, and I put 31 links below on everything. Please watch this video or please at least come and check out all these links. Um, it's, they're saying this plan in their own words. And I got everything in here, including uh, um, Obama's health care bill and, and how it's included in that, even. And uh, even the Human Genome Project and everything like that. Uh, so I'll link you to this, and I'll also link you to another video that I did here. I'll also link you up to this, uh, titled Denounce God, Depopulate, and Disarm, and Develop Global Government Slash Enslavement. And uh, it's got a lot of uh, great stuff in there as well. Uh, including uh, a boatload of links to, to check out as well. So uh, I'll link you guys to that and uh, take care. Oh, also, thanks to uh, Walking Dude 004, I think, uh, for the uh, first part of this video, um, talking about how the RFID chip will kill you if you disobey. All right, guys, take care. Much love.